Hey y'all, welcome back if you're already subscribed and welcome front if this is your first time here. I'm here again for another tips and tricks video for decorating in Disney's Dreamlight Valley. We already went through and did several videos for the exterior and more will be out soon. In this video, we're going to be discussing some in-depth design techniques to help take your house to the next level, even if you don't have a lot of items yet. My house is currently seven stories and it's mostly empty. Good thing this is a tips and tricks video and not a house tour. First tip, buy everything in Scrooge's shop. I get asked a lot how I get certain items. And if it's not craftable, I get it at Scrooge's shop. So buy everything from Scrooge's every day. Even if you don't think you need that trellis, go ahead and order a few more if you can afford it. Right now, it's important to note that there are a few items that aren't orderable from Scrooge. So even if you do have it in your furniture inventory, you can't buy it. I don't know about y'all, but I always need more tables, chairs, and embellishments to decorate. Scrape and comb through the catalog meticulously, using up your daily buying limit every single day. Once you've got your items, your first move needs to be to find a matching floor and wallpaper. A mismatched wall and floor will always make your house look discombobulated. So my next big design tip is to color match. Take this a step further by trying to match the actual shades of color to each other. Instead of just adding blue and blue, match dark blue to dark blue, light brown to light brown. Here you can see I took this even a step further and matched the pattern and shape as well. The diamonds of the floor match the diamonds of the room. Here we have another example of shape, but this time with squares. The table, the chairs, the espresso machine, the rug, and the counter are all squares, while the shelf, plant, and dessert have rounded shapes. The colors here also match as well. This room actually uses the quadrant technique, which we break down the room into four distinct sections. This room has a breakfast quadrant, a research desk, a music corner, and a fireplace seating area. If you wanna build your own room using this technique, there's a tutorial in the comment section and the description section below. My next tip is to experiment with different height levels. This can be done on a large or a small scale, but try placing tall next to short, short next to tall, going from tall to short, spacing things out. It takes a bit of time, but it makes a huge difference when you find a pattern that looks just right. Try different placements with items on counters and tables and even tall items against walls. What looks best next to the wardrobe? Should there be space between the mirror and the painting? What do y'all think? The next design technique here is very similar. It's to experiment with different depth levels. Instead of building horizontally, try placing items in front of other items or items that stick out more from the wall to build depth. This helps really build the realism in the room. It helps make it feel like it's a real space rather than it just having perfect symmetry. A little goes a long way with this technique. Up next, try layering with embellishments. What makes sense in the space? Put logs near the fireplace, books near the bookshelf, and food on the table. There's a fine line between embellishments and clutter, but this is your house, so you make the rules. The next tip is to not worry about large areas of empty space. Over here by my Mickey shrine, there's a very large block of open space, but that's okay. Not only are there limited furniture items in the game right now, but most real life mansions have huge areas of empty space anyway. After you've gotten a grasp of space and design, don't stop experimenting. That's why my next tip is to try everything three times. Even if you like how it looks, try some other options. Then you'll truly see if you've made the best thing that you can make. Do y'all know the largest room in the world? It's the room for improvement. Before you finish up your space, take a look from all angles and sides. Take some time to turn objects to the side because sometimes you'll see something that you didn't see before. Try looking from above, looking up close, or even looking through the in-game camera lens. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe. My channel is just a little more than a week old now, and I appreciate every single person that takes the time to click on any of my content.